Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today I want to talk about growth because I think a lot of people have this misconception about what growth is and how to get there. I want to say, uh, uh, Joseph Campbell is an amazing person for understanding and giving us increased understanding into how the process of growth works. Uh, that often we believe ourselves to be locked in this inner battle against this darker version of ourselves. We see ourselves as torn between like the good angel that sits on our shoulder and says, you can do it, you can succeed. And that dark devil that says, fuck it, screw it, who cares, it's not gonna work. Let's just screw up everyone's life instead. But often I think it's not that easy to imagine a clear antagonist or a clear protagonist in your life. A lot of people don't have a clear developed voice that is good and a clear developed voice that is bad. Often I think it's much more common and this is marked often in Joseph Campbell's journey that we are pulled between this status quo and this process of change. And often status quo is not necessarily good or bad. Neither is change necessarily good or bad. Often we stand on this journey or this starting point and we feel like an urge to go and jump and take a leap towards change. But often we have no idea if this change is going to be good or bad. And here is often the real conflict. The real conflict is, is this change going to be worth it? Is it going to make my life better? Or should I remain here where I'm to some extent content or satisfied to some extent? And uh, this is an ongoing journey. I think a lot of people uh, move from this stage and eventually decide, yeah, I want to take a leap for it. And the reason is like we all decide to some extent change. We have the realized version of ourselves, the already realized you, and you have the you that you feel pulled towards becoming. And in here, like that's why we all tend to make the jump sooner or later. Very few people stay locked in this status quo forever. You can wait one year, two years, ten years, but eventually you do it. And uh, to some extent that raises the question, why not start sooner rather than later? I think, however, that as you move forward to this journey, you can start on a progress of change. You can start taking up new projects. And you can start going forward and making changes in your life. Perhaps you're trying to lose weight. Perhaps you're trying to become uh, more active. Perhaps you're going to the gym. Perhaps you're starting up a new business. But to some extent you find yourself like you, you're just staying at home watching Netflix. You're not doing anything. You're just uh, you're starting to like eat chips again. And you're not you're skipping gym and you're not going out and you're back to that normal rut, back to that normal comforting routine. And uh, that's also a part of this challenge. Status quo is a stronger influence than you might think. Uh, status quo, interestingly, is not you. Uh, status quo is on the other side of the crossroad. Often status quo is kind of like where you were standing just a second ago. And uh, there is an equal pull towards like the position that you were in one second ago as to there is to what's going to happen next. You're constantly moving forward and we're living in a time that flows. We have this consciousness, we experience like we're moving forward, we're taking new steps. There's constantly something new happening. Second, new second, new second. Time is flowing when we experience this consciousness. And to not change when we are experiencing this nudge that is uh, the uh, that's the thing that reveals what status quo really is status quo is always located in the past or the past present in a sense and that's always it like your time is flowing but you're remaining still you're remaining in stasis you're actively making an effort or you're actively doing something to keep yourself from moving forward in time and uh, experiencing the next second and experiencing the next next moment so we're imagining ourselves in this battle, this grand battle against the devil and the good guy. And we have this clear view from Disney and from all the things that we've seen in life and the books that we read that this is how it usually looks for most people. Changes, uh, basically this clear Jedi way where you're doing the right thing, you're protecting the good people, you're fighting for the people you care about. And... Uh, 
you're fighting against this big baddie, this super evil, this uh, really terrible thing, but often today it's, that's not how it is. And I do encourage you to move towards, and I think often a sign of growth is getting a clearer protagonist, getting a clearer sense of stakes, getting a clearer sense of what it is that you're afraid of. I think a lot of people remain stuck in stasis because they never describe what they are afraid of. Yes, there is an antagonist. Yes, there is a protagonist, but often we have not developed the idea of this protagonist. Often this is something that comes up later on in the story. Usually you only meet the antagonist about halfway through the story. That's when you get the twist. That's when you start realizing that you've invested time in this. There is stakes. There is something to lose. There is something you gain, something important. And now you have to kind of do something to make sure to figure out how to keep it. So the antagonists tend to show up later on in the story. In most movies and stories, the antagonists take some time to develop. And uh, when you're starting to get this clear antagonist in your head, that's usually when you're starting to actually notice that you made progress. Actually, at some point in the story, you also realize that suddenly you have a relationship and you didn't have one before and you feel like this person is important to you. Perhaps you made friends and allies on the way that come that you come to realize matter to you. Perhaps uh, you've uh, hit this new goal. You've lost 10 kilos or you have gained some abs. And now you're like looking at uh, like what's going on and you realize the antagonist was not like uh, the status quo that you mentioned in the beginning. Uh, the antagonist is actually like some clear uh, idea or something uh, that you're dealing with that is pulling at you. Like suddenly, as you find yourself in this relationship, you can find yourself caught in the fear of losing this person. Suddenly, as you gain the, like you lost these kilos, you can find yourself in a process of fear of loss or anxiety or worries. And suddenly, like you, uh, there is something new that comes up. Always, when you've changed, something new has come up. And uh, that's, it. Change is always throwing out the dice and change is always getting something new, but change is always also opening the door to loss. And um, here, like uh, most uh, successful people that we can take, okay, take J.K. Rowling as an example, have gone through and experienced this loss. Like uh, you've gone to the point where you started writing, you got invested and suddenly you found yourself broke, you had no money, you weren't sure how to raise your kids and you were about like, to, you, are, you were at this point where you were in a really bad situation. And uh, often this process or this experience is what gets us to kind of rise up. It gets us to realize that what we were afraid of was not as dangerous as we had previously thought. What we were struggling against was not as uh, uh, scary as we had previously conceived. Like when we didn't develop our antagonist, when we weren't sure what we were fighting against or what we were fighting for, uh, we had no fears, we had no anxieties, we had no insecurities, but we also had no joy. No pleasure, no satisfaction, nothing we felt genuinely good about. And here's the thing, comfort is not happiness. Comfort is often mistaken as happiness. You feel at peace with a situation in the sense that, yeah, it's okay. I am, And I can tell from my personal experience now, I've got a job now, I work now, I work at the bike retail. And to some extent, yeah, I can feel at peace doing these things. And at the same time, I realize that, well, the journey that I've started upon, moving to Amsterdam and uh, writing and uh, creating videos and everything I'm doing now, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. And I think I was reading uh, The Alchemist and it uh, left a big impact on me. Because in The Alchemist, there came a point where he came to, he was searching for like this big grand quest or this treasure that he's been dreaming of his entire life. And then he finds this village and he marries somebody he loves and he finds that piece of comfort. And suddenly he doesn't want to keep moving towards that treasure. He doesn't want to lose what he's built up, the comfort that he has. And the comfort is alluring in the sense. The comfort uh, can come at any time in the sense of, oh, um, but uh, I have it pretty good now. Why should I take the risk? And I think uh, often the people that have the most are the most conservative in that regard. When the more you have, you think, sometimes you think, oh, 
uh, I can't take this risk because I don't have, uh, I can't afford it. But often it's more difficult to take a risk when you have something. When you have something, that's actually there's actually something to lose, and then you don't want to throw the dice because you don't want to lose it. So when you want change, it's actually easier to start up change when you don't have anything. Also, that's why I give the advice to people that want to start changing their life, close a door. If you want to start up something new, if you're ready to a new project, you have to close a door. You have to perhaps end a bad relationship that wasn't going anywhere. You have to perhaps uh, stop investing your energy in something that wasn't giving you anything. You have to perhaps quit a job. You have to perhaps do something that will get you moving, that will get you the energy and the necessity to move forward and uh, that always becomes true you always have to rebalance you always have to reprioritize to make sure that you're moving forward and that you're not staying still because you don't want to stay still because staying still means losing consciousness that's the strange thing about it consciousness is a thing that's constantly moving forward time is moving forward and so consciousness has no choice but also move forward and so if you're not moving forward you're losing consciousness in the sense that you're not becoming aware there's no new information to take in there's nothing new happening and so your mind shuts down you stop thinking you start stop uh, moving you start to stop making actions you stop making decisions and you stop being alive Touching on to MBTI, I think the perfect metaphor for you is your personality type. The perfect metaphor for this antagonist, this rival that you're fighting against, is your inverse four letters. An INFJ's biggest rival is the ESTP. The INFP's biggest rival is the ESTJ. The INTJ's biggest rival is the ESFP. That's what you're kind of fighting against inside yourself, the regressive part of yourself, the childless part that doesn't believe in you, that doesn't trust that you are a good, that what you're doing is going to work out, that doesn't believe in your vision. And um, the muse then, the inspiration, the growth that you're pulled towards, the light that you're pulled towards, the new life that you envision, the dream, the treasure that you're moving towards, that's the inverse second and third letter uh sorry it's that's the inverse first and fourth letter so for an infj it's the enfp for an infp it's the enfj for an intj it's the entp uh just take uh the first and the last letter and flip them to find out what is outside your comfort zone but within your interests and within your values and finally, to understand what your autopilot is, flip the middle two letters, the second and the third letter. So for an INFJ, your autopilot is, your comfort zone is, your static mode is, what you're uh, lost in when you're binge watching Netflix is the ISTJ mode. What you're binging in as an, uh, uh, should I say, uh, ENFP, is the ESTP mode, what um, your comfort zone is, what your static zombie mode is when you shut down, when you stop being conscious, when you stop moving forward, when you stop pursuing change. For an INTJ, that's the ISFJ. So be wary of these things, notice these things in yourself, notice that different types are representing different things for you. Um, notice as an INTP that your big, biggest driver for growth is the ENTJ. Your biggest uh, regressive part of yourself, uh, your inner rival, is the ESFJ. And finally, your autopilot, what you are pulled to remain in and the status that you want to stay in, that's the ISFP. That's all for today. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.